Hello, this is Kate O'Hanlon with the Laparoscopic Institute for Gynecologic Oncology discussing total laparoscopic hysterectomy for the morbidly obese. In the morbidly obese woman, it's sometimes necessary to use extra long trocars. We still only need 5 millimeter trocars, however, for the very mor morbidly obese woman, we will replace the umbilical trocar with a 12 millimeter trocar and put through the 12 millimeter trocar the endopaddle which you see being expanded inside the abdomen. This patient's in steep Trendelenburg. She has shoulder bolsters on and she's in the modified lithotomy position. And what we're doing is simply using the large endopaddle retractor to pull the tissue out of the pelvis so that a very focused hysterectomy can be done. A lymphadenectomy on this patient, if she had endometrial cancer, would not be part of the plan. This patient has a body mass index of 71. So our plan is to simply to get the bowel enough out of the pelvis so that we can briefly see in one area to perform the hysterectomy. So we're getting a washing as we normally do for endometrial cancer. And now you can see we're just going to focus on the each part of the hysterectomy. Thank you.
Now we can go back to finishing the lysis of adhesions for this patient. Again, keeping the bowel on gentle traction using a Davison Geck bowel retractor to keep a little tension so that you can identify the clear area. And you're ready if you need to to repair the surface of the bowel again. Now we're going to show how to bring a SH needle into the abdomen again using the needle driver holding the needle very specifically so that the hub of the needle does not uh, stick out of the side of the needle driver. It's okay that the tip of the needle gets uh, pulled in a little bit. Now we're going to be over sewing a cystotomy in this situation. And I'm just doing what it takes to orient the needle to being perpendicular in the needle driver. There's no secret there, there's no magic, there's just experience. The more you do it, the less dumb you look. Now we've over sewn a hole in the bladder and you can see the suture there. This is going to be the second layer of over sew that's going to protect the first layer. So I'm simply picking up the layers with the SH needle and I'm going to make a large figure of N over that and see how I'm ready to grab it immediately before it goes very far. You should really pull it through the first knot like you see now. I should even pull it through farther than this. Now I'm going to pass the second suture again just to simply completely cover this bladder uh, repair that I have done you can see the raw edges of the bladder and there I'm getting into the nice smooth edge of the bladder and even pulling that other section in so that there's a nice coverage of the area of the hole so now I'm pulling that through First, before I tie my knot, I'm going to check where the end of the suture is. You can see it over there stuck to the bladder surface. Now I'm going to load the needle so that the hub of the needle points down the needle driver and I'm going to wrap it twice. Since I don't have a lot of suture there, I'm lucky that I'm in position and I pull it. Now in this situation, I should have pulled the needle side more because I've got an awful lot left over on the loose end but I'm already loaded for my second knot and so I place it and because I have so smartly left that suture on the other side I know exactly where it is and it's ready for me to grab it I will put it back there again purposely I'll stick it to the moist tissue so that it stays because that's where I want to go find it on the opposite side of the needle driver that I'm wrapping. So here I am for my third suture and I simply go pick it up. And that works very nicely. I'll place it there again. If it doesn't stick well, you place it so that it's on a wet surface so that it sticks better. Now I'm left with very little you can see how I wish, I wish, I wish that I had left myself more suture length. And when this is the case, just get closer to the knot. See how I'm just snugging down on the knot? And I'm certainly glad I left the loose end where I needed it to be. So here I'm showing you some of the mistakes. Not leaving enough uh, suture on the needle end in this one. And in the previous one, just general clumsiness, frankly. So that's a nice oversew of this bladder. It's effective and credible. You certainly would not want to have to open the patient to close this 4 millimeter hole that we had previously placed a stitch in, in the bladder. And with 25% of women having C-sections, this is a reality for you doing your total laparoscopic hysterectomy. You want to avoid any reason for opening. Now to remove this, yes I could easily pass it out the vagina, but if I had already closed the vagina, then what I would do is simply grab the hub or the tip, as you can see, 
in a collinear fashion and watch as I pull it through the scope and confirm that I get it. So we've completed our discussion of laparoscopic adhesiolysis and overso of the injured bowel. Thank you.